let's get across what we're seeing in currencies at the moment, particularly reflecting the macro picture. Lachlan Meekin joining us from Go Markets. Lachlan, very good to catch up with you again. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, interesting to see what's coming out of the States in the moment. And it has raised that prospect where you've got slower growth, rising inflation, dare we say stagflation. Um, How are you seeing it at the moment? Yeah, the dreaded S word. It it does look like that, doesn't it? I mean, some of the the macro surprises certainly been to the downside while the inflation surprises up to the upside. So um, it's a mixed bag. I think with that PCE reading last night probably uh, indicates we'll get a hot reading from the month figure tonight as well. Well, I think it's expected at 0.3, 0.4 definitely on the table. So um, we could see certainly some more US dollar strength tonight, I think. Um, And also the Fed next week. Um, Obviously, they're not going to do anything with rates, but it's going to be that statement as usual. And they may, they may take a hawkish tilt. So I'm a little bit bullish on the US dollar in the short term. I think um, it's had a, a little bit of a sell-off here as risk uh, sentiment and some of that geopolitical risk has, has been priced out. But um, I wouldn't be surprised to see it bounce back if this inflation, I think inflation will trump the GDP figure for now. Um, so tonight's figure is a really important one, the, the PCE month-on-month one. Yeah, in fact, we've got a lot of data coming uh, out of the States. PCE, as you said, tonight. Uh, next week's uh, Fed meeting. Also got uh, non-farm payrolls at the end of the week as yeah. well, along with some other data. So uh, some real key points there. And, but overall, you're saying given the trend, you're expecting that US dollar to perhaps, if not hold, strengthen from this point. Oh, I think so, mate. I think we'll see a little bit of a bounce. I mean, it was it was pretty overbought. Um, it hit you know, year-to-date highs a couple of weeks ago, up that 106.50 on the Dixie, and it has pulled back, a, a healthy pullback. It's, it hasn't been too steep. Um, but I, I really am kind of bullish on the US dollar until until the Fed starts cutting rates, um, to be honest. I mean, they just keep putting it off. And what, as you said, they've, they've priced in for September. And then if we get a hot reading tonight, maybe that'll move out to December. So it's, it's until we see that um, real evidence that they're going to start that easing cycle, I think the US dollar will be bid and, and also geopolitical concerns as well. It's We saw from um, the Middle East stuff, the you know, like other couple of weeks ago where the, the US dollar was still that favoured uh, safe haven. So uh, while there is kind of things going on in the background, it's always going to have that bid. Um, and also the Fed seems to be, you know, higher for longer seems to be the mantra. It doesn't seem to um, be any any rush to ease rates. So I think we'll see a, a bid US dollar, um, certainly for the first half this year, I think anyway, until the Fed starts really signalling that easing process. We did see the US uh to your treasury note tip over five percent. Do, yeah. do you think the ten years heading in that direction too? Uh, possibly, mate. I, I think um, the two year. There's quite a bit of resistance there at that five percent. You've seen it try to break through a few times, so maybe that's topped out. But uh, that will mean the ten will be. Yes, yeah, certainly could could gravitate to that level as well. Um, it, it's possible, mate. It's going to be data dependent, obviously. I mean, this this if inflation and and employment come in hot, um, I think those figures will trump any kind of uh, slow down macroeconomics such as the GDP we saw yesterday last night but um, it's definitely a possibility and, and it's it's been so hard to predict I mean you know early this year they're predicting you know four or five cuts out of the Fed and now we're barely getting one so um, it's really the data it's all data dependent we'll have to see how as you said a very big week coming mm. up in US uh, data we'll see what happens. Yeah, also a, a big day today in terms of the yen, of course, been under extreme pressure at um, multi-year or multi-decade lows, I should say, against the US dollar. Now, we do have the BOJ meeting today. What are the expectations? Well, this is a very interesting one. and it's, I, I'm a big fan of the dollar yen. I love watching traders really kind of poke the bear of the Bank of Japan. You see them push it up to these levels. Um, you saw, if you look at the chart, 152, it held there for a bit then pushed through. Then 155 was the line in the sand, held there and pushed through. Um, today, out of the Bank of Japan, I mean, they had a, a monumental shift in their March meeting. So I, obviously, I don't think they're going to do anything rate-wise or anything uh, uh, large in that respect. I, I guess all they can really do is uh, talk about tapering some of the JGB per, um, purchases or have a little bit of jaw burning about um, concern about the weakness of the yen. But really, there's I don't think there's much they can do with, short of a, of a full intervention that's going to stop this rise, mate. And I think um, 155 was put out as the, as the line in the sand. But I guess if you look at the intervention from late 2022, uh, the language from the Bank of Japan has always been about excessive FX moves. And the move up uh, from that 
stage when they intervened was was much bigger than what we've done now. It's been pretty fairly pedestrian um, high rise up in the last few months. So maybe that new line will be the one closest to the 160, who knows? But um, it'd be interesting to see what jaw boning we do get out of the of the Bank of Japan today, especially as they're just coming off the back as well of that um, that meeting they had last week with the US and the, and the Koreans regarding their concerns for the weakness of their currencies and they you know they got the Washington to to confirm that so um yeah I mean it's an interesting one to watch I think you I think we'll see it grind up but I think you'd be very brave as well just in case mm. you get that uh intervention and you look at the options market some of the options pricing it looks like um it really has blown out especially on the puts so we've yeah you'd be brave to be long but I think it will grind up until they f- I finally do something Lachlan, the Aussie, uh, also an interesting one at the moment, uh, given we had that um, quarterly read on inflation coming in hotter than expected. Um, now, speculation, and we were speaking with Warren Hogan from Judo Bank earlier, uh, pointed the fact that we could see interest rates move higher, not lower, as the next move, potentially to 5.1%. Um, that is clearly would be supportive for the Aussie. How are you seeing it? Yeah, absolutely. I did see that actually, and it's it's a, a big call. Um, but I mean, after that CPI print, you saw looking at the um, the yield curve on the thirty day in the banks, they've gone from pricing in you know cuts there the, the year to to hikes over just that one figure. So um, I think it's probably a little bit too soon to jump on the rate hike bandwagon. I think um, we've probably got peak hawkishness for now anyway priced in. So the Aussie dollar probably will. Um, peak around here i think i think it's had, a, it's had a good run against the us it's back in that range it's finding some resistance to that 200 day moving average and it does have support around 65 so it's been interesting to see if it, if it can hold that 65 and, and regain that range it was in for the start of the year um but yeah as far as rates go i think we've we've pretty much priced in the peak hawkishness for now but you know saying that in may we've got the wage price index we've got um the monthly cpi so that will be very important figures. If if they come in hot like this CPI did um, the other day, then uh, yeah, rate hikes could be back on the table. And they've never taken them off in their statement. I mean, the, the statement last time was a bit more dovish where they toned down the language of the chance of hikes, but they still left it in. So it's, it's definitely a possibility, but I, you'd have to see this, this new data next month, I think, to, to make a call on that.